So when it comes to your fixed blades, you gravitate more towards the tactical field knife feel. Say something like a Cold Steel SRK, but you're pretty hard on your tools and a over mold handle onto the tang just isn't quite what you're looking for. And you like the idea of the Topps Mohawk, but you want something with more reach and a thicker stock. Well, then the Topps Knives Apache Dawn might be the tool that fits the bill. Well, that's right, folks. Welcome to another video here at Gideon's Tactical. I'm Aaron, and we're gonna be looking at this large and impressive field knife. Now, for me, I also gravitate to this style. It connects with me. I like the shorter saber grind that designs like this have, particularly for harder use tasks. And I just feel like it definitely gives you a capability, not only in an urban environment, but also when you're out in the woods. And I recently got my hands on this Apache Dawn, now in Rocky Mountain Tread Edition. Uh, is what the handle scales have. And this is a large, impressive, quarter inch thick, full tang, 1095 USA made field knife. And that's what we're gonna look at today. We're gonna roll in some competitive options, not only from Topps Knives, but other manufacturers, to just give you a feel for what the blade can do. And we're gonna give you some beautiful blade footage. I've had a bunch of time and some fun thumping on this blade to see what its capabilities are. And I think it definitely has kind of a, a niche category. It's giving you a lot of features that certain blades have, but they have different grindings. Um, and it has different capabilities that larger blades don't always offer to you. So I I think it's got a, a cool balance that we're going to be able to take a look at today to see if it's something that would fit the bill for you when you're out in the field. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, folks, here we are with this Apache Dawn. And uh, it reminds me a lot of the Airwolf. They discontinued it and I think they brought it back. It's just a, kind of like a bigger version of that in some ways. Um, and we reviewed that long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, so what is really cool about this one is, you know, you can see a little Apache logo right there. It says Rocky Mountain Edition. Then USA made on the other side right there. Uh, but the, uh, years and years ago, because this is one of their older models, it's been around a long time. Um, uh, it, I guess a squadron of Apache pilots came to them and to tops and was like, listen, we want a survival knife that is bigger that we're going to carry with us when we're flying. That's bigger than what are, we're getting issued and what's kind of available. And so they basically custom made this for this crew and then just started, you know, making it full production. So um, that's obviously some Apache helicopter pilots wanted this. So that's definitely the idea. It's a, like a, a, a pilot survival knife. Think that way when you're looking at that. And that's obviously when, in, you know, in the intro and I was rolling in some other stuff. And when we look at competitive options, that's definitely the vein of what this is designed with. So uh, 1095 high carbon steel, differentially heat treated Rockwell 56 to 58. Um, you know, really tough, durable. You're gonna look at a full tang all the way through, quarter inch thick. So that's unusual for this size of knife and this style. Usually they're a little bit thinner. Um, even think of like a K bar, you know, much thinner, 0.16. Um, a lot of them are gonna be like 0.19, you know, stuff like that. So quarter inch thick. The actual cutting edge is 6.1 inches. The overall blade length is 6.75. So you're definitely getting a lot of reach with the blade. Um, it's got that saber grind and then it has this really cool swedge right there, kind of goes up and then goes down. And uh, though it's definitely on an angle, it wasn't you know, sharp when I was doing some of the other work, it will definitely beat up your batoning stick some. So that's just something to be aware of um, with that. So uh, the weight of the knife itself is 15.5. So basically a pound. Um, so think of like an SE5, some of those other, you know, knives that are out there. Different though, in the sense of a lot more real estate, meaning reach and um, more piercing, you know, in that regard. So you're gonna get more on that end of things and a choil obviously and things like that. So just, just you know, food for thought there. Um, so what I experienced was the relief edge being nuts. They did an amazing job on the relief edge for it being a shorter, more, you know, field knife style, not like a woods craft or a big wide bellied blade. I mean, this thing has a wicked relief edge, which makes you be able to do fine work like feather sticking. If you did have to do the, you know, survive now in the military survival situation, you're probably not building a fire most of the time because you're trying to probably get back to friendly lines and evade. But, um, you know, if you're using this out in the woods, something like that, you could absolutely do finer carving, spear making, 
for you know traps those type of things or you know um, booby traps uh, you know secondary weapons you know whatever you would need to do in that regard uh, and that's what you would be doing with this knife you absolutely can do that a lot of knives like this would have a kind of a wide fat grind which would be really strong but you couldn't really do a lot of work with it so the fact that it comes with just a really good edge but it wasn't weak you know I'm, I mean I was splitting like crazy with it um, and because of the short saber grind you're gonna have to pound kind of hard initially but once it gets through it's gonna like explode the wood so that's really good as well so if you wanted to use, again if you just connect with this style of knife and you want to go hiking camping you know backpacking whatever you want um, you know just wood work around the yard whatever uh, the it'll be able to do that very well and that relief edge also allows for lots of good um, like cordage cutting um, and other you know like materials like that that you may have to go through paracord seatbelt you know whatever it would be in more of a um, you know, military law enforcement environment in, in an Apache, you know, you crash, you know, whatever, um, you have to eject, you know, whatever it would be, you're going to be able to cut through that stuff because of that good relief edge. So that's really, really nice. And then you're still getting a really good stout tip that will be able to penetrate, which is what you would want in a, you know, life and death scenario. Um, but it's strong. So you can stab through even maybe aluminum, things like that and get, get out of a, a crashed vehicle if you had to. It's cool. There's actually, I think a video on YouTube where Topps just, just kind of talks about this knife a little bit in detail and you get some perspective from Craig and the team over there, which is kind of cool that if you're really into this knife, you may want to check out, they'd go into some, some details, uh, that I'm not touching on. That's kind of cool. Um, so the only drawback, so there is one drawback is the chopping for a one pound knife is not great. It's not designed for that. It has a super long straight and then just a, a small little belly right there. It, I mean, it can delimb some stuff like the thickness of your thumb, you know, but that's about it. I mean, you're not going to be chopping down trees and doing that type of stuff. Um, you know, heavier, fuller bellied, higher ground, ground knives will just be better at that. It just, it, it's not a chopper. So if you're thinking that you're going to go, you know, chopping all, down all, tons of bushes and branches and stuff uh, it, it's not really fun to do that it's not really designed to do that very well um, and it just won't excel compared to what else is on the market now it will do better than those other ones that I rolled in in the beginning and some of the competitive options um, but as a tactical utility knife survival knife pilot knife it, it's um, doable but you know there's way for a pound there's other stuff on the market if you're looking for more of a chopper um, that will do absolutely better than this tool all right, so we're looking at the ergonomics handle. That's very important for me always. Um, and a lot of times you get, you know, like survival tactical knives, you know, that are pretty blocky, clunky, not fun to hold and use, you know, they're for quick use or with gloves and they're just not super ergonomic. Not really the case with this one. This is, this is good. So, um, what we're looking at from handle to the back is about like five and a half inches G10. It has been Rocky mountain treaded, but not super aggressive. I've seen kind of crazier stuff in the past from tops. This one, um, didn't, you know, I was kind of like on the fence. I'm like, I don't know, because I'm, I'm not always a huge fan of the Rocky Mountain Tread. Um, I prefer just you know, like full rounded handles. Um, but this one was fine. No issues. To my knowledge, this is all that they're offering. I don't think they have a non, you know, Rocky Mountain Treaded unless you probably were to contact them and maybe they could make you one off the top's website without the tread on it. So um, option. But what you're looking at here is a nice full G10. Good cut in right there. I wear large size gloves. You guys can just see there. I got plenty of real estate out the back there. Got that rounded pommel. Um, I'm kind of surprised actually that it didn't have like more of an angled pommel for like breaking a window or something. But you know, military glass is usually a lot stronger. Um, pretend or you know, polymer, clear polymer sometimes. I, what do I know? I'm not a pilot. Um, but that's what I would assume. So anyway, no striker back there, but that exposed tang, little red liners in there, make it pop a little bit because of the way that they've rounded that. It's not clunky or blocky. And I got again great traction, great grip, fills out my large size hands well with plenty of room to spare. A little bit of jimping back there and up front, but no and down here, but nowhere is it like painful or an issue um, for me, even in like a reverse grip or something like that does it cause a problem those screws are rounded and basically in line with the handle scales themselves and what i like is even with the jimping here it's not as sharp as some other tops jimping has been it's kind of rounded off a little bit so it still gives you good grip but it's not going to really tear up your hand as much as other out there and then that really nice choil so you can choke up and even though it's a big you know heavy one pound knife you're able to get some really good 
forward grip and be able to do that finer work if need be. So I really like that they have that choil on there. I think the knife, because of its size, really you know does that well. And then you got that again, just good cut in. So it's great. I mean, I have zero complaints with the hand ergonomics for the style and the design and the the, the how you would be deploying the knife uh, in the way that they design the handle. So it's going to come with this green sheath. It's molly compatible. It's nylon. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know I'm not a huge fan because of the Velcro. Honestly, if these straps were just updated slightly and they had a button, at least it would be doable because it's just Velcro. I mean, sand, grit, gunk it in it. It's pretty tricky then to use. It's pretty loud and clocky and clunky. You do get that pouch. You could run some paracord and wrap it around. But honestly, it needs to be upgraded to Kydex. Um, I even spoke when I was talking with Tops. Uh, they were like, yep, we know it's an older design. They may, depending on you know how things go, they may update it to Kydex. They are doing that with some of their popular older models. They're slowly updating to Kydex or leather, You know, just depending on the design. Um, AZ Welke is who I usually send my um, knives off to, uh, and they do an awesome job. You can reach out to them. Um, but you got to probably keep that in consideration that they're, you're either going to want to do a custom leather or a custom Kydex on that, and that is going to bring the price up probably 40 to 60 bucks, depending on who, what, when, where, why. With that, we're going to go ahead and go to price and competitive options. So uh, this bad boy is going to usually go from like 140 to 150 is kind of where I'm seeing it floating around. So I'll have a bunch of links for you guys over to Blade HQ, GP Knives, Amazon, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. You can go to Tops as well and check them out. Um, so we'll have all those links for you guys below. We do appreciate when you purchase gear that we're reviewing, you know, if it, if it connects with you. All I want to do is give you the data that you need so you can make a wise choice with this blade. So those will all be below. Tops did send this over to me when I requested. I was like, hey, I want to check this out. It's been around for a long time. I connect with it on its designing. Will you guys send it over to me? So I've been thumping on it uh, and they did send it over so I could, you know, test it and review for you guys. So just for food for thought here, like we've been talking about, and with that price, um, so we got the a Mohawk Hunter. That's a more compact version, basically. So you can keep that in consideration, about 120, 115 bucks. Um, no choil, obviously. Not, not any weight uh, compared to this. You know, it's like almost half the weight, I think. And uh, it's going to be thinner, but it is a full tang. You know, definitely more of a field, you know, survival pilot style kind of knife that will come with a Kydex sheath. So, man, if this can come with this bad boy at some point, that'd be dope. Um, let's see here. So just to, to, again, consider, you know, here's that cold steel that I rolled in there. The SRK, a, a, an awesome knife for what it is. Um, you know, polymer. This is the VG10 or uh, S, what is this? Sorry. CPM 3V steel made in Italy, about the same price as this tops, but not full tang. You know, it's got a stick tang in here. Comes through strong, but polymer can wear out, wear off, loosen up. Uh, it's not going to be as thick, obviously. It has nowhere the amount of weight. So there's just a durability factor that is going into this Apache Dawn. So that's something that really you got to um, you know consider, and and that's really what why you're connecting with it. You want that style of knife, but but. A polymer handle just is not durable enough. The polymer handle just isn't durable enough. Maybe you've had a bad experience in the past with polymer loosening up, you know, and you do want that big beefy weight. If you're looking for that kind of fighting style knife, you know, um, is the U.S. Combat. About the same price, if I remember correctly. It'll also come with that nylon, you know, sheath. The This one does fit in their, pig, was it like War Pig, I think? Sheath fits perfectly in there. You can't, Tops uh, will sell that separately um, to you if you have this. Very, It's actually even longer, but the choil does not function very well. Has a very similar grinding, though. Great relief edge. You do have a top guard, definitely like a K-bar style um, knife, but it has a bow drill. It does have uh, kind of a non-lethal striker back there. Um, very similar blade shape though, kind of feel, uh, and that again is just another cool option that you could consider um, when you're looking at it. But again, for more like wood field craft, I would actually rather go with the Apache because of the des designated finger choil and no top guard to consider or worry about. So food for thought guys there uh, as you are looking at this design and why would you be wanting the Apache compared to what else is out there? Well, there we have it folks. I 
Thank you for coming today, watching this video. I hope that it's just been fun and entertaining, but also giving you the data that you need. That's what I always wanna do in these type of videos is show you the capabilities, the pros and the cons of the tool, so then you can make those choices on whether or not it fits the bill. And I wanna hear from you guys in the comments below. I love having the conversation. Does this make a lot of sense to you? Do you own one already? And you're like, dude, it's rocking. Or is there maybe some drawbacks to the features, design, or whatever it may be that make you want to gravitate either to a different tops knife altogether or um, to just a different you know design and brand uh, completely you're just not into field knives you want more of like a machete or more of like a bushcraft style uh, I look forward to hearing the discussion and topic and, and comments below but for me I, it's got a really cool profile it's a beef and it and just a tank, but at the same time, pretty nimble and pretty agile and with that good choil, it still gives me a lot of control with that great relief edge. So it definitely has the, the capability of a field knife, but giving you that overbuilt strength and larger reach than you don't usually get with some of the other designs that we looked at today. So guys, thank you so much for coming over here today, checking out the channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. Love to hear your guys' thoughts. Um, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Check out the other video popping up. Subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Throwing up content there as well all the time. And uh, never forget, guys, particularly in this season of life, you're not alone. We're here for you. We care about you. And finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.